This is part two of a Python stable diffusion tutorial series. If you're looking for part one, you can find the link to that video down in the description below. I highly recommend checking it out before proceeding with this one. Today, we're going to be taking a look at ways that we can optimize the previous script that we made by modifying the script so that we can run stable diffusion on machines that only have CPUs. Or if you do have a GPU, you'll be able to run it on a lower end graphics card that has only four gigabytes of VRAM. We're also going to be taking a look at things like inference steps, negative prompts, and art styles that we can use to increase the quality of our image outputs, as well as some other cool things like increasing the number of images images that are generated per prompt, as well as changing the width and height of our images that we're exporting. I recommend sticking around to the end because we're going to be generating out some really cool AI images. Without any further ado, let's get right into the code. All right, so if you're fresh off of the last tutorial, you should be somewhere around here. Uh, you should have around 36 lines of code and we can run this script and we'll generate out some images. We're gonna continue off from where we left here. And the first thing we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be adding a bunch of new variables. Now these variables are going to be used to control the new features that we're gonna be adding. We're gonna be adding negative prompts, uh, number of images per prompt that we can generate. We're also gonna be adding something called number of inference steps height and width, as well as device type and low VRAM mode. Now let's go ahead and add in our prompt. So I'm just going to copy the prompt from down here and paste it up there. We're going to add in a new variable called negative prompt, just like that. We're going to set this equal to quite a bunch of stuff. So we don't really want any cats in our prompt right here. So when stable diffusion goes and generates out some images, we really just want dogs riding bikes. We don't want any humans. We don't want any cats, birds, or any other animals riding bikes. So we can just go ahead and put cats here. We can also say we don't really want any like ugly looking images images or unrealistic images. So let's add those keywords as well. And I'll explain what this negative prompt does at the end. Just let's just add some keywords here. So unrealistic, We're also going to add in some more photographic keywords. So we don't want any bad contrast. We don't want any bad lighting. We don't want any poorly drawn images. So let's just add in these keywords here. We don't want anything morphed or disfigured or anything weird or odd. So these keywords that I'm adding to this negative prompt, basically think of it as the opposite of what we want. So we're telling stable diffusion up here in the prompt section, what we want something to look like when we render it out. So this negative prompt is basically telling stable diffusion the exact opposite of what we want. So we don't, we don't want any cats. We don't want any ugly or unrealistic looking paintings. We don't want anything with bad contrast, bad lighting, poorly drawn images or morphed or disfigured or weird odd looking dogs riding bikes. Now we are going to get some of those examples, but it'll make it a lot more likely that we'll get some really good looking images. So next, let's go ahead and add another variable. This one's going to be called number of inference steps. Now we are just going to set this to 100. Now the default value for this that stable diffusion adds, if you don't specify it with a variable is just 50. I'm going to set it to 100 because we tend to get more higher quality results. And that's exactly what the number of inference steps means. It's just the amount of time that stable diffusion spends on a given image. So the more time you spend on it, the higher quality image it will be, but it has a caveat that it'll actually take longer to render out these images. So I have a little snippet here I'm just going to paste in. This is just straight from the stable diffusion documentation here, right from the huggingface.co blog. In general, the results are better the more steps you use. However, the more steps, the longer the generation takes. All right, let's move on. And the next thing that we can change here is actually the height and the width of the images. So let's set the height here to 512 and we're going to set the width to 720 right here, just as an example. Now there are some rules with this. So these rules are again, straight from the Hugging Face blog. Make sure that the height and the width are both multiples of eight. So what does this mean? So if we go to the calculator right here and we type in 512, we can then divide this by eight and we'll get an even number right there. And obviously if we multiply this by eight again, we'll get that same number. We can also do this with that width value that I selected here. So if we say 720 and we divide this by eight again, we'll get an even number as well. Now, I don't exactly know what this means. It just makes it a little easier for the computers to calculate here and we'll just make the process more efficient. The next one is don't go below the 512 limit right there. It just lowers the quality of the images that are outputted. And another rule is do not go over 512 in both directions. So, so don't really create large square images. It's best just to stick to 512 per square images and upscale them later. The last and final most important rule is always have one of these values equal to 512. If we change either of these values, so let's say it's 1080 by 1920, we'll get some really weird looking images that have some repeating patterns in it, which we probably don't want. So this is a good example right here. So let's just leave it like that. Now there are two more variables we need to create. The first one is device type. We're just going to set this to a string and we're going to say CUDA 
like so. And this is actually going to be the variable that determines what computer processor that we're going to be using to render out the images here. So I just have a quick comment I'm going to place in here. This basically just tells us what input that we're going to use for this string to determine if we want a GPU compute, we're going to set that to CUDA. If we want to compute this on our CPU, we can set this to CPU. And the last and final variable we're going to add here is something called low VRAM. And we're just going to set this to true right now. And basically when this is enabled, we're going to be able to run stable diffusion on lower end graphics cards that have about four gigabytes of VRAM. And we're going to be using this variable here to determine when we want to enable that feature. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create a new function here. So let's define the function. We're going to say render prompt, just like that. We're not going to put any variables inside the parentheses right there. So let's just go to the next line. Let's copy this if statement like so. We'll actually just cut that out because we're going to move that down into this function anyway. So we can then create a little more space here. We're going to create two variables here. So one will be called the shortened prompt and we're going to set this equal to this value right here. Don't grab that last parentheses right there. Just paste that in and we can actually set this value down here to the shortened prompt variable that we just created right there. And don't worry about if it's just red like that, we're going to be changing that in the future. A lot of this code down here is just going to be deleted and we're going to change it. So don't worry too much about that. All right, let's just clean everything up by adding some spaces here. Now we're going to call the shortened prompt variable again and just say shortened prompt. We're then going to replace all of these spaces within this variable right here with the underscore character like this. So I'm not sure if this is an issue on other operating systems, but Windows doesn't really like spaces in its folder names. And we're going to be creating some new folders here in a sec. So it's just best practice when you're working on a Windows machine, do not include any spaces in your folder names. So we're going to go ahead and create one more variable here. We're going to call this the generation path. Now, because we're going to be generating a lot of images with different styles, and we're going to be inputting multiple different prompts, we want this tool to be really well built out. So we want our output to be sorted nice and neatly so we know where everything is. So with this generation path, what we're going to be doing is creating a new folder within our stable diffusion output folder that's unique for each prompt that we put in. And we can do this simply by just including the prompt within our path. So we're going to say equals, we're going to say os.path dot join just like that we're going to add in the save path like so we're going to then add in that shortened prompt variable we just created we're going to say remove suffix and this is going to be a bit of a weird one but we actually have to remove the ellipses here that we added to the shortened prompt here so we're going to be using the shortened prompt variable in another part of this function in the future but because we're using it right now within a folder path we have to remove the ellipses because windows doesn't like when periods are included in folder names it gets confused between what's a folder what's a file so we got to remove those. And that's what we're doing with this remove suffix function right here. So now that we've created the folder path, let's go ahead and make sure that that folder actually exists before we run the file. And we're going to do that just by this example up here. So we're going to say if not os.path.exists parentheses generate path. So if that path is not a real path, os.makeDir and we're just gonna pass in that generation path there like that. So the next thing that we actually have to do is call the stable diffusion pipeline, just like that. And we're going to be using this segment of code right here. Let's go ahead and recreate that. We're actually gonna to have to make a couple of these because we need to determine whether or not the user has specified they want a CUDA device or a CPU device because they have two different processes in the stable diffusion pipeline that we need to call. We're gonna be using a bunch of if statements here and we also have to take into account the low VRAM bool there as well. So right down here, we can basically just say if device type equals CUDA. So this is going to be the stable diffusion pipeline for CUDA. We're going to say CUDA like that. If low VRAM is enabled, and this is going to be the low VRAM modified stable diffusion pipeline, we're going to say pipe equals stable diffusion pipeline dot from pre-trained. And this is going to be very similar to the code that we have written down here. We're just going to pass in the stable diffusion version five model like so. We're going to add in two more things here. So we have to add in torch D type like so. We're going to set this to torch dot float 16. Just like that, we're going to add in one more variable here. We have to add in revision and we're going to set that to a string that's equal to F P 16 like so. Now if the torch module appears red here, you may have to come up here and import the torch module itself. You can see that we imported autocast, which is a sub module from torch itself. So let's just go ahead and import torch as a whole. So we'll say import torch like that. And this error message should go away. Next, let's handle the logic when the user specifies that low VRAM should be turned off. So we're going to say here else, and then we can just basically copy the pipeline from down here and just paste it in like so. Next, we're just going to copy the pipeline 
type to CUDA right down here. Since we're already in the CUDA if statement right there, we can just copy and paste that in like so. And the last and final thing that we need to do for the low VRAM segment is just say if low VRAM type dot enable attention slicing underscore slicing and just set that to a function like that. So this is actually the very important part. This is the function that actually reduces the GPU VRAM requirements right here. So don't forget to use that. Now let's go and work on the CPU pipeline call. So we're going to use the LIF statement right here. We're going to say LIF device type is set to the CPU. And basically we're just going to copy and paste this from pre-trained pipeline right there. And we're gonna create one more else statement right here. We're gonna say else, so if the user did not enter CUDA or CPU into the device type variable up here, we're gonna print some information just so the user knows what the appropriate input is for that variable. And we're just gonna say something real simple. We're gonna say invalid device type selected, use CPU or CUDA only just like that so we're just telling the user what's an appropriate input there and we're going to return the function just so that we don't continue and we don't break anything else now before we move on let's go ahead up here to the stable diffusion folder and we're going to create a new file here we're going to call this file prompt engineering .py, and this file is going to contain all of the style information for each of our styles. So we're going to create a new variable here called art styles, and we're going to set this equal to a dictionary. Now the first style, let's just set this to none so that we have a good visualization of what our blank prompt looks like on its own so we can compare it to the rest of the styles. Now the first style here, I have a few preset, but let's just run through the first one. We're going to say 3D render, and we're going to set this to a 3D render style. And the keywords are going to be these right here. So I just pasted these in, but you can copy them if you want. But very similar to the prompt and the negative prompt, we're going to be adding in keywords that Stable Diffusion recognizes. So Unreal Engine render, Octane render, 4K, Houdini render, and a whole bunch of other stuff like depth of field, Arnold render, Lumen Reflections, Ultra Realistic. These are basically just more keywords that coerce Stable Diffusion into choosing a specific art style that will make our output images look like a 3D render. Now you can go online and choose a bunch of these different styles, but I already have a bunch of them pre-filled out right here. So we can just close this file up right here. We're gonna actually import this file so we can go to the top of this file here and just say from prompt engineering, import art styles like that. So we now have that variable inside our main file right here. And what we're gonna be doing with this is using that dictionary in a for loop. So it'll make a bit more sense as I go through it. So let's just write it out. But we're gonna say for style type, comma style prompt like that in art styles dot items and we're just going to close the parentheses off like that and we have our for loop let me explain a bit about what we're doing here we're basically taking the first variable so this key right here for each of these values in this dictionary we're then also grabbing the second variable, which is the value of this key value pair. So this is how a dictionary works in Python and in many other programming languages as well. They use different languages, so you might hear array or dictionary being thrown around, but they're essentially the same thing. There's some kind of name representing some kind of value. And you can have anything in these values. You can have other dictionaries, you can have lists, you can have integers and so on. It's really cool stuff. But in this for loop here, we're just calling the names for each of the values for those prompts. And now what we're gonna do is combine the style as well as the main prompt that we inputted right up here. If we scroll back down, we're gonna set this to an F string and we're just going to include the prompt with some curly braces like that. We're gonna then add a comma to that and then some more curly braces and then just add the style prompt like that. So we now have our finalized prompt that we're gonna pass into Stable Diffusion. It has the main prompt right here. So this a dog riding a bike. And then for each art style, we'll get a new prompt generated with the keyword information that we placed here for a given prompt. So we have 3D render, we have digital art, fine art, photograph color, and photograph black and white. So these will all be appended to our prompt. And we're going to be then sending that full prompt into Stable Diffusion. From here, let's just create a couple more print statements. So let's actually add this print statement to this for loop here, just so that we get it printed each time for each prompt, because it's going to be changing now that we have the styles appended to each of the prompts. We're going to add in one more print statement here, and we're just going to add another F string. We're then going to say full prompt and then print out the full prompt on a new line here, add some curly braces, and we're going to say the prompt stylized like that, just so that we know what prompt is actually being generated out there. So we're going to add a new line. And because we don't want to see just the character count for the prompt itself, we want the full prompt that's going into stable fusion. We're just going to copy the prompt stylized and just 
put it into this little print statement right here just so that we know exactly what the character count is that stable diffusion will be taking so we have one more for loop that we need to create so this will be the for loop that will generate out multiple images when we specify so we're going to actually go up here and create one more variable and we're going to call this variable the number of images per prompt like this and let's just set this to five for now so instead of running this file multiple times to get lots and lots of different images we can simply just set this variable here to five or anything greater or less than that to get a specific number of prompts so let's just copy that and we're going to be using that in a new for loop down here and we're going to say for i in range and just that variable right there so this will loop over the code within this for loop for the number of times that we specify the images should be generated and that will give us a certain number of images Images. Remember, we're also doing this per prompt. So we're going to be generating out five images per prompt. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So we're going to be generating out 30 images there. Now the code that we're going to be using and referencing is going to be this segment down here. We don't actually need this pipeline anymore since we've already taken care of that, but we are going to modify this segment here slightly. So remember, we still need to determine if we are generating using the graphics card or the CPU of the computer. So we have to add a couple more if statements here as well. We're going to do that by saying, if device type is equal to CUDA, and we're gonna close that off. We're gonna say with autocast parentheses and then CUDA again, but then I'm gonna close that off. We're gonna create a new variable here called image. We're gonna set this to the pipeline, and then this is where we can call stable diffusion. The first thing we're gonna do is send in the stylized prompt, just like that. We're then going to add a comma and go down one row. We're gonna send in next the negative prompt just like that we're going to set that equal to the negative prompt add another comma we're also going to send in the height here and we're going to set that to the height variable we defined above we're then going to define the width variable as well and just simply set that to the width variable we defined above so now we have all our information here and we're set to generate the images on our graphics card but we also need to define this for the cpu as well and we're going to do that just simply with an else statement because we don't have to verify that the user set specifically cpu or cuda since we already verified that up here with this error message now the cpu is very simple we can basically just copy this segment right here and just paste it in don't bother with the with autocast cuda thing that's just for gpus and we're almost done let's delete this segment right here and what we're going to do is just tab this up by two spaces and just clean everything up right there we need to add in the generation path to this segment right here just so that the images actually generate out into the folder then what we need to do is add the style type to our file name just so that we know what style is generated for each image. So each image name will be unique and will actually have the style type that is being generated for that specific image. And just to make it all fancy, we're gonna add in a spacer here, just like that. And we're gonna add that to the name of the file prompt right there. Now, the last thing we're gonna do here is just outside of this for loop, we're just gonna add a nice little print statement to let the user know that everything is all done and the render is complete. So we're just gonna say render finished like that and just create a new line there so it's nice and spaced out. Oh, and I just missed one thing. We need to add this little images section to the CUDA pipeline image output right there. So we're just gonna paste that in and we're all set. Now, all we need to do is just simply call this function within the file so we can just say, render prompt just like that and we're good to go all right so our file is really done here we can basically just go up here and click run main.py so let's see what happens so we'll get this little 50 or spacey is not installed using vert just don't worry about that uh, and down here we'll have a loading bar so this means that the file is actually running and stable diffusion is generating out an image for us right now and we can see that it was saved to this file path right here so if we open this file path up in the file explorer here pull this up and just paste it in like that we'll get this image hopefully there's a dog in there but we obviously got some kind of person riding a bike now it's not really ideal so let's go ahead up here and add people to the negative prompt just so that we don't get people or humans riding bikes because we we just want dogs riding bikes right so let's go ahead and cancel this and then restart the generation. And now if we go back to the folder here, we can see there are some more dogs here. So we see there's a dog with something that looks kind of like a wheel. It kind of almost looks like that's his leg. But if we go to the next image, we can see some kind of dog or dogs riding a bike. And this is my favorite part. It's just really cool to play around with the prompts and get lots of different things here. So you can see that this image is actually the 3D render. So that's why you can kind of tell that the style is a bit different. And if we go back, we can see other alternatives here. So this one's really cool in my opinion. It looks kind of awesome. He's riding a little motorcycle right there. 
And one of the thing that you might notice is that the framing is not a square. And this is because we set the height to be 512 and the width to be 720. So that's why we're getting that nice rectangle shape. So when scrolling through the styles here, you can clearly see that the art styles that we set within the prompt engineering clearly have an effect. So we can see that digital art looks very different from 3D render and 3D render looks very different from a normal prompt of a dog riding a bike. And we can also see something peculiar that it looks like the styles are actually showing a dog riding bike more than the normal images are themselves because we do get a lot of interference here with some people. Maybe it's trying to make this person a dog. That's why it has the weird nose there. If we go to the next one here, you can see this guy has also kind of got a weird looking mouth there as well, but it's still kind of person shaped. And I think these art styles here really give it some more freedom and imagination to express itself, so which is really cool to play around with. And let's open up our first photograph color right here. And you can see this one does a pretty good job at making a dog ride a little bike right there. You can see he's got a nice head, but the body looks very humanoid. So the fun thing about this is that we can just change the prompt. So if we go back up here and we say something like a dog eating birthday cake. I'm not sure if dogs can eat birthday cake. That might be some issues there, but let's just see if we can get some images of what it'd look like if a dog were to gobble up someone's birthday cake. So let's just run this here. So these ones are turning out really good. We can see that there are a lot of very adorable looking dogs eating <laughs> what looks like some very delicious cake right there. And this one even has a little cone on it said, so it's obviously his birthday, which is quite adorable as well. Now, I do wanna mention one little trick I use. So because I'm recording this using OBS, OBS uses a lot of graphics power itself. My machine has two graphics cards and you can actually set the graphics card that Stable Diffusion uses simply by scrolling down here, going to this pipeline here and changing this value. So this sets it to the second GPU on my machine. So if I were to just do this and just say CUDA, it would set it to the very first GPU on my machine. And you can actually figure out which GPU is first and second on your machine just by opening up Task Manager and going to the performance section right here. So the first GPU is this one that's doing a lot of work. And this this one down here is actually what's doing a lot of the work for my OBS recording software here. So by setting this to is either zero or one, we can determine which GPU we can run this on. So you can actually run this on multiple GPUs at the same time, although I'm not sure what the performance gains or losses are with that. So do some testing first before sending this to a production environment. Let's check in again with the images here. We can see we got a lot more dogs <laughs> eating some birthday cakes. We got some funny looking dogs right here. That guy's very cute. And this guy just looks adorable. So let's keep going. That's very nice. Awesome. So this is a really cool tool. I love it. I love it so much. If you have any questions or comments about anything throughout this tutorial, please leave them down below. I'd be more than happy to help out and try to resolve any issues. I'll do the best I can. If you're interested, we also have a Discord server. You can reach me on there much quicker than on YouTube. That's linked down in the description. So what do you guys think about the new script? What do you like about it? What do you think that we can improve about it? And what do you think about the outputs that we got? I thought those were really cool just with the different styles and it really makes the script a lot more useful. I'm going to be doing a couple more Stable Diffusion tutorials, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.